This segment of DoD TV's Natural Barn is brought to you by Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. This week on Natural Born. Muzzle older season's here. Bill's got a really nice buck located. They have been just pounding this bean field. You're gonna see a lot of critters tonight. We had another giant on the field. It's just incredible. We are in Minnesota. And the OTC come through tonight. Yeah, that's a monster. Winchester and Drury Outdoors present Natural Born. It's in your blood. It's in your DNA. It's late season in Iowa, and cast member Bill Gadeen is hoping to end a three-year buck drought. Muzzleloader season's here. It's late December. Bill and I have yet to get in a tree together. We're finally going to get out for an afternoon hunt. Okay, your stuff ready? Uh, kind of. <laughs> well, we always fret the shotgun season. The deer get pushed around quite a bit. They get kind of skittish and stuff, and it's pretty hard seeing what's really out there. You don't know what's dead. You don't know what got run off to the neighbors. It's just hard to keep track. Well, a property I got north of town, Dave's brother lives pretty close to, and he said he'd been seeing quite a few deer out there midday, so we decided to maybe make a game plan and get over there and try to hunt this. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's well-deserved. It's been a tough fall. With the drought conditions we had this year, the bean pods were a little closer to the ground. Farmers had a harder time harvesting. In turn, it made these late season bean fields a really good food source and it really pulled the deer in. Well, as luck would have it, when we got there, they were already out in the field eating. We just carefully slipped ourselves into place. I had a temporary blind set up already and we, we did pretty well getting in there. The fact that I haven't had an opportunity to hunt much this year, I wanted to get out here and uh, see if I could knock a deer down. They have been just pounding this bean field of ours. There's a lot of deer in this field. You're gonna see a lot of critters tonight. Well, although I was running a camera all summer, I really had no picks of bucks that I wanted to shoot. But fortunately for us, once this cold weather set in, a lot of mature bucks had moved into the area and we're using this field as a food source. Bill's been watching this field regularly and there's a particular eight point that's been showing up nightly. Deer are pouring out of the timber. We saw a couple nice bucks early, about four o'clock. We look across the field and here he is. He steps out, he's coming right to us. Hey, he's got pretty good eye guards, man. I seen him uh, Christmas Eve night, actually. I come come out here watching and I seen him. Well, these deer, they were in and out and back and forth. They were kind of skittish, moving around a lot. Anytime a vehicle would drive down the road, they'd take off and then he'd eventually work themselves back out. Well, here it is about 4.30 and a little four point comes walking in, walks right into 10 yards. straight downwind of us, turns and runs away and takes the whole herd with him. We think we're done. They all run to the far end of the field and they start feeding. Nice, that's just awesome. Obviously he didn't like it, snuck off over the hill, kind of took the deer with him, but I see they're down there in a flat. It didn't take them too long to settle down. We think we're done for the night, but slowly, meticulously, they start working their way back out. Well, finally, after sitting here for a couple hours, one buck, one we were actually interested in shooting, broke off and made a beeline right for us. He's coming. It's him. It's a big eight. This buck was quickly closing the gap, and I was actually getting concerned that he was going to get too close. Okay, I've got him. Nah. 
He's going down right there, ain't he? He ain't going very far. Bill put the crosshairs on, blows right through his shoulder, and he takes off on a death run. I think it was game over, we thought. Thompson Center, right there. This gun's awesome, man. <laughs> this gun is awesome. You know, he was so close, the brown filled the entire scope, you know? I had to back the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is sweet. He's just right. Stay up to date with our official journal on DruryOutdoors.com. See what I see? There he is, right there. He didn't go 150 yards. Oh, we know this buck. We called him Roman because he had that big old Roman nose on him. Look at that. Holy cow, yeah, is he does. Is that different? I got pictures of him just right down the corner there. Almost looks like it's broken. Yeah, got good mass, beautiful buck. Well, we wanted to get back out here this morning and take a good look at this buck. It got late on us last night. I gotta admit, I'm pretty proud of this deer. He's by no means the biggest deer I've killed over the years, but uh, I've had a pretty tough stretch here the last few seasons, and it felt really good. I was just glad Dave was there laying it down with us. He walked right in darn near to bow range, and I had the Thompson Center in hand, so we made short work of him when he got there, and uh, the tracking job was pretty easy too, so I can't be more excited than I am with this buck, even though he's not the biggest buck in the timber, he, uh, he's my buck. And I was really more than happy to get this tag wrapped around his horns. Well, as hunters, we've all been through that big dry spell, uh, myself included. After a couple years, when you finally feel that success again, it is a huge gratifying feeling. Well, when you start really trying to manage and you're hunting specific deer, you just don't kill as many as you used to. That you're gonna go through a drought and uh, there's no feeling better than getting back on the board. Um, you know, honestly, it's been a while since I've felt that, but I did eat an Ohio tag last year. So Bill, this year, if I kill a big one in Ohio, I'm sure I'm going to know just how happy you felt and I'll be more uh, in tune to be able to answer this question, how it feels. But congratulations on that buck, buddy. In Illinois, Major Leaguer Jim Tomey is on a hot streak and hungry for another buck. If we don't kill deer, we got to eat. What do you think Terry's going to be excited? Look at that. You never stop. How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Through the years, we've met some pretty interesting people, but I don't know that any are more interesting than Jim Tomey. Jim is one of those guys that's hard to put into words. I know one thing, everything he tries to do, he does it at this level. Not here, not there. He's up here. We've shared so many hunts and so many memories and so many good times with Jim through the years. Well, it's time for one more. Each fall, we keep in contact with each other. He wants to know what we're seeing. We want to know what he's seeing. He's heading into the blind. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. Oh my God. We got another giant on the field. Basically what tonight has been is what we call most MRI, most recent information. You know, our muzzleloader season starts tomorrow. So basically, you know, we've got a 170 plus inch eight pointer that basically is coming through here. And uh, man, what a magical night. I mean, our last two nights have been just absolutely incredible. It's been very, very worth the sit, no question. We nicknamed that deer the Hall of Famer. He's a stud. You know, we'd like to see him at least get to five, and I'll tell you, if he did, he would be, you know, he would be really, really special. He's 60, 60 something. Monster, monster, monster. This is where it becomes tough because it's 345 and we can probably shoot him. We're gonna just let him feed a little bit and see what happens. He's a, he's a giant, I bet that's a deer we saw the other day. Ooh, he's, he's awful 
good. You know, from my experience, I would have done the exact same thing as Jim. If you got a shooter out in the field at 345, with it being that early, if you know you have a bigger deer in the area, there's a good chance that deer is going to show before dark. If I know there's a lot of mature deer there, deer that are a lot bigger than one that might be in front of me at the time, then I'm probably going to let that deer walk. There is no doubt I would love to be in Jim's situation. We have limited opportunities every year, and of those opportunities, I split mine in half with Kyle. So when a mature deer is in range, Wow. There's no question the deer is done. I am not waiting for a bigger deer to show up. Keep up with all the excitement on our official Facebook page. This segment of DOD TV's Natural Barn is brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. I don't know, Jim. I, this deer, it's a, it's a heck of a deer. We gotta shoot him. Now look, this is the thing. If I open this window, if I open this window, they're gonna scatter everywhere. Come here, you go here. Go right here. He's walking right at us. He's running at us. Going to check these does. We didn't open this window up. Matt! Matt! That's what happens when you wait around. <laughs> we couldn't get the window open. We couldn't get the release off of our safety. It's unfortunate, but you know what? It was kind of my fault because I waited around. You know, he's obviously a very big mature deer. And uh, you know, I hope, I hope I don't regret that decision waiting that long. So, you know, it is deer hunting and uh, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep going. Giant baby, oh my god. Oh my god. Hello. You're not you're not gonna believe it. It came back out. A bigger one and he's dead. He's ginormous. Well I, I'll tell you what, that's just awesome, Jim. Congratulations, buddy. I'm glad you're on our team. We're glad you're on our team. <laughs> Jim call me for life. Yeah, you're on our team for life. You look at that monster. What a deer. Oh my goodness. Man, oh man, I think he's five, huh, Rhino? Oh yeah. Yeah, we obviously want the score. Everybody in the country wants a big score, but you know, the one thing here we're trying to do is harvest five-year-olds and thank everybody, Chuck, Randy, you know, Mark and Terry for sending their cameramen down, you know, and kind of helping us along the way, set up our food plots switch grasses, you know, how to kind of go in and out of sets and not be detected. And I think it's really helped us over the years. So feel very honored, very humbled and blessed. What a year. Tweet the Drury's at Drury Outdoors. Let us know about your hunts.
It's mid-November, and team member Eric Boothan has a gut feeling that the Bucks are moving elsewhere, so he decides to leave Iowa. Well, we are in Minnesota. It's been windy for the last couple days, so we've left our Iowa stands alone, come to Minnesota. I chased this big 10 boy around in September. I had him in this food plot in front of me three times. He's probably almost 160. Hopefully something comes in. Something's got to bust loose, so hopefully it's tonight. Let's see what happens. You know, he looked just like he was gonna walk down the creek, get in the trees, which gave us the ample time to get out of the tree, get up into that corner post, and hopefully those does would bring him right by us. You know, the shot scared me a little bit, but I just knew I put it in the boiler room. He was, he was cording to me just a tad bit, but he ran out there and he's hunched up and he's waddling his tail like they do. You know, they're pretty much gonna die, but I, I knew right off the bat I had to load that gun up and get another one in him, and that's exactly what we did. First muzzle loader buck ever. Yeah, that's a monster. That is a monster. Guaranteed boner. And that is a monster. We worked hard for that deer. We were sitting in that cedar tree by the house. He come off the hill, come in here, chasing those. We thought we lost him. <sighs> Calm down. Thought we lost him. We snuck up this fence row, and sure enough, he was over there. And he chased those over here, and a doe come right down here, let him right to us, shot him at 50 yards. Monster. Absolute monster. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What an absolute picture perfect hunt. Never seen this deer before. We're in southeast Minnesota and this is a monster. My biggest buck in Minnesota and first buck with a muzzleloader. And the OTC come through tonight and I couldn't be a more happier guy. You know, it's just an awesome deer to shoot one in your home state where you're actually born and raised from. You live in Iowa now, but this is an absolute monster Minnesota deer. Next week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born. We're gonna head west until we can find the sun and hopefully some beautiful Nebraska turkey. Woohoo! You can't get turkeys any closer. We've been to Wyoming a couple times whitetail hunting, but never mule deer or antelope. Table Mountain Outfitters, day one. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>